Uh, I think in, in the morning, Tom has given very good um, basic coverage of how, what is the status of current data, but I will talk about our, a small case study that I did on the biodiversity data with colleagues from University of Arizona. So it was 50 years ago, Hutchinson asked a question, why there are so many kind of animals? But I'm gonna uh, ask a similar question, but from a, a very weird perspective. Is that hyperdiversity or is it hyper inaccuracy? Um, so this is the GBIF data that we have so far. It's almost a billion biodiversity records. And this is a lot of data. It gives us a huge opportunity to start biodiversity. However, there are a lot of issues. Uh, I think Tian has mentioned a lot of those issues, but I will only look at one issue that I see interesting. I call it biodiversity uh, hotspot. So it's not the true hotspot, it's a weird hotspot. I, it is defined as the coordinate of the location that have, has been replicated as over a thousand times in a, in a database. So for example, on this map, uh, this red point, which means there are over a thousand records that are all located at the same exact location. So it's obviously impossible all the individual or species live here. So there must be a reason. Um, and this problem is, can be huge. For example, each record, I mean each, this hotspot corresponding to over a thousand records. And all the points on this map, they correspond to 2.5 million records in your database. So those records have been probably collected by a lot of human efforts, so that's a pressure, but we have to better analyze them. And otherwise they're gonna show, give us, say, uh, outliers if you study the biodiversity patterns. So what we are doing is we're gonna ask three questions. So where there are so many records like this? Is there a pattern that can be generalized? And the how to address those issues. And we're gonna use GIS and R and some, uh, we're gonna look at the raw data and we're gonna use whatever information we can get to make our best guess why that happens. And I will only show three case studies. First one is the hotspot in Costa Rica. If we look at the hotspot, we know Costa Rica have high biodiversity. However, if we look at this point on the map, if we look close enough, it is the, it's, it's a building <laughs> of a biological station. Over 20,000 records that all have the same coordinate. Look at here. So that's obviously an issue. It's impossible. And there's another case. There are the over a thousand records collected uh, exactly around this shooting range in probably in Norway. So I also summarize this pattern. People use location of landmarks to represent their observations of species. So the second case, uh, we look at the hotspot in South Africa. So what we did is we look zoom zoom in to the to the map. The point falls exactly in the ocean. So we have a, a few hypotheses. First hypothesis, it is all from this museum. The second hypothesis is it is from our, this uh, national park because we found some text description of our hiking trial uh, of this uh, national park. The third hypothesis is about the coordinate. If you look uh, close enough of the coordinates, it's uh, 19.375, it's actually 18 plus three eighths. And the second way is 33 plus uh, seven eighths. So that's infer that, that kind of represents a, a coarse coordinate system. Okay, if we zoom out in South Africa, we see this. It's an evenly spreaded hotspot. And so I will say this is kind of support of our third hypothesis, which is a coarse graded uh, coordinate system. And a similar case happened in Spain. We look at, we look at the two hotspots. The text description are mainly about the mountains around it, or the cities around it. But if, if we zoom out, we see the same pattern. So basically they're also using this coarse graded coordinate system. So that's the summary of case two. In the next case, we look at the hotspot in California. And then, we, then again, we zoom in, zoom in, and it leads us to our uh, ridge line. And so obviously it's, it's not uh, something we can know based on our prior, prior experience, but this point come to be the centroid of that county, which, which is 
just mentioned by Tang this morning. And this is not the only case, and this happened frequently. So the, the black star is the centroid of the county. If you see two, that basically means we have different ways to calculate the centroid. And that colored point is that hotspot. So to generalize, people use the political centroid to represent the locations uh, within that political division. Okay, given those uh, patterns, can we use those patterns to screen out the other hotspot that we cannot easily identify? So what we did is, we, did our, um, we, 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 we gathered a bunch of hotspots, which ha they all have the duplicate coordinates. We also gathered some unique occurrences. So basically there are no replicates in the database, which are represented by the green uh, triangles. So the green triangles are the good data, the, the, the red ones are the, the hotspot. We calculate the, all their distance towards the centroid of the smallest political division, which is county. So we calculate all their distances and we look at the, the histogram of the two uh, distances. So on, in this figure, on the x-axis, it's the relative distance. Relative distance means it's relative to the size of the central, uh, of the size of the county. The y-axis is the number of records. So the histogram of the red, the, the red histogram, is the distance of duplicated points to the centroid, whereas the green ones are the good, good point, the distance between the good point and the centroid. So obviously, the, their, their distribution are different. And probably we can uh, select a threshold, and with this threshold, we can screen out those duplicated points. And so the next question is uh, how we can address it. Obviously, so, but the, fir the first question is, is there a negative impact from those duplicated points? See, the centroid, if we have our, a centroid have a lot of duplicated coordinates, how will that make a negative influence on our research? So this is the paper from Park and Davis in 2017. Uh, this is look at all the locations in the environmental space. X and Y are the, the principal component of the environmental data. And all the green data, all the green points are actually a, a random sample from the whole county. And this red star is the environmental condition of the centroid. So what does this mean? This means the centroid can likely give you an extreme environmental condition within the county. And, and if you look at the mean, which the, mean the, the blue point in the middle, which is the mean, so that's a big difference. So there can be a negative impact. And, and also, this negative impact probably it depend, it's case by case. It depends on the, your study system. On this figure, if you ignore the line, ignore the color, the axis is the, the variation, of, variation of elevation. And the y-axis is basically the variation of climatic conditions. So basically, this can tell you that Say you use the centroid of our county, Colorado, you may face in a, a very bad variation of climate. And whereas if you are in Kansas or Oklahoma, if you use the centroid, it may be okay because there is a relatively little environmental variation. And well, there, there, that's one thing I just mentioned, but obviously there are more tools that can help us to use biodiversity data. For example, there's the taxonomy resolution service. This can help you standardize our taxonomy name towards our already uh, standardized na a a name database. And this can help you clean up your data. And also, there are the two called uh, geo geographical name resolution service. As Tom mentioned this morning, the the, the, the description of locality, say the country name, can be, exp can be written in a hundred different ways, US, United States, United States of America, but this, this service can help you standardize the location. So all of those tools will be useful to help you clean up your data. Uh, so I think the, to look forward, those one billion records give us a good opportunity, but the method and tools from the, from the informatics will help us embrace the challenge.